and, and welcome to Wilmington, North Carolina, part of Next Gen Network's coverage of 2012 College Easterns. We're here at the finals with Pittsburgh facing off against Central Florida. Central Florida, the underdogs coming into this situation. Pittsburgh, the powerhouse here, number one seed at the tournament. I'm Brian Jones here with Mario O'Brien, and we have an exciting matchup today. Central Florida just beating Tufts in the semifinal, looking great while doing it, and Pittsburgh rolling through competition today. Also, past history, Pittsburgh defeating Central Florida at warm-up 15-10, to 10, but Central Florida has made some adjustments since that time period. Central Florida has made some critical adjustments that are going to give them a much better opportunity to, for a victory here in this game. In that game at warm-up, they had Freisetter playing on offense. He's their, he, was their, he was their primary cutter. He's six feet eight. And they realized that because they were doing that, they became a little bit one-dimensional. In talking with their coach, Andrew Roca, before the game, he said he, he recognized that, that they'd be, become a little one-dimensional. And so he decided to make a change in practice. He, he had Freisetter start practicing with the D-line so that the offense would learn to not rely on just fry setter. That's allowed their offense to become a lot more fluid, spreading the offense around. Now, that's gonna be the key for them here in terms of having a chance, is they need to spread it around. They can't just rely on fry setter and Hickson to make plays. And on the other side, Pittsburgh, Nick Kazmarek, the coach of Pittsburgh, has told us that he wanted his defense to step up, and he said that Stanford invite was some of the worst defense he's seen in years by this Pittsburgh squad, and they made it to the finals and lost narrowly to Oregon. Now this defense has stepped up today. Very easy games over North Carolina and Stanford, crushing their opponents, and that looks like to them, in order to keep on rolling, that defense is going to have to produce breaks. So far, the offense has also been rolling for Pittsburgh with Tyler D. Girolamo, Alex Thorne, two big playmakers, two Callahan candidates. It's going to be hard to choose between one of those two for Pittsburgh to nominate. But the Pittsburgh offense has also been rolling. Central Florida is going to have to play a tight game in order to win this one. We're about to get to the opening poll, and we have Central Florida starting out an offense in that vaunted D-line for Pittsburgh that's been playing so well. Pittsburgh D-line full of several freshmen, Trenton Dillon, Joe Bender, Pat Earls as well, and then senior leaders Colin Connor and Zach Kaufman, both captains. Tyler DiGirolamo, the other captain. We have Andrew Roca leading Central Florida as the head coach. Central Florida Dogs of War, Pittsburgh and Sauvignon. Connor getting set to pull. John Best, the centerpiece of the Central Florida offense. Wind here has died down. We've had an interesting weekend here with different weather. It's very starting to cool down outside after being warm earlier today. Best getting things started with a high release to Bettis. Upfield to Langdon. You can already tell all the cuts here are being concentrated on high intensity by both squads right off the gate. Big bid by Pittsburgh. Beardsley cannot get there. Back to best, around, finding the open man. Both teams coming out high intensity, defensively for Pittsburgh, and the cuts for Florida, for Central Florida so far, have been very accurate. Vertical stack, and Langdon can't hang on to it. Early miscue by Central Florida gives Pittsburgh the opening opportunity to break. Kaufman to Bender, freshman from YCC Impulse, high school squad that's produced so many great players for Pittsburgh. Drop Cho, Connor, Kunsa, Dylan now working towards the end zone and Pittsburgh still in a three handler set. Dylan played on Radnar High School Putting it out to space for Kaufman. Makes the grab for the goal. Pittsburgh up one to nothing over Central Florida. I love the way Trent Dillon plays. He had an opportunity early in that point to throw a huck. He decided, you know what, I think my advantage is with my legs. He, he got the disc back a couple times. Throw and go, gets it back, and then makes a nice, touchy, I.O. backhand leading throw 
for a goal. We talked about defense for Pittsburgh, and they are starting out the game right once again. Just the conversion off of that turnover. Central Florida really had no opportunity to get that disc back. Yeah, Central Florida didn't even have a play on any of the discs that Pittsburgh was putting in the air offensively for that, on that point. Interesting now, their O-line was not able to hold Central Florida's O-line. And now we see Freistetter step to the line. We said he'd been playing mostly D-line. There he is, fourth from the left on your screen, 6'8". They, they couldn't hold on their first point, and here he comes. We also see on the other side of the field, Tyler DiGirolamo coming in on defense. Going to match up likely with Freistadter. He got the best of him at the beginning of the game and warm up starting out Pittsburgh with a break in that game. Connor with the pull. Another defensive player that started to raise his game after becoming a fifth-year player captain now. Matched up with some of the strongest cutters on other teams. Best pivoting around finds Bettis. Freistadter gains the under against DiGirolamo. Back to best. Bullock. Nations. Nations playing a little bit more back than he has been earlier, creeping back to the handler line. Freistadter coming in underneath, receiving the break. Bettis along the line. Pick called on the play. Credit goes to Dylan defensively, shutting down down the key handler for Central Florida. Trent Dillon on the right side, middle of your screen. Play restarts. Running Bullock underneath. Puts it out to space to Langdon. Call on the play. Langdon already frustrated, not liking the call. Looks like Colin Connor may be calling a push off. Very slight foul, if any, upheld by the observer or at least. That's a bogus foul call, a Brian. That's getting, getting beat under and out at the same time and using a foul call to bail yourself out. It's weak. Play restarts Bullock. Looking back. Defense for Pittsburgh now forcing them back. Best. Bullock, vertical stack for Central Florida. Freistadter using the hammer, makes the catch. Freistadter with his first goal of the game. We might see a lot of that today for Central Florida. And that throw is also something that we've seen all day from Bullock. You're going to see here you might, that Bullock points to the opposite end of the end zone before he makes the throw. Here's the point with the left hand. Freistadter makes the cut. Delivers the perfect hammer for the goal. Central Florida dismantling zones earlier in this tournament by hammering over the top Bullock, being the main guy to do so. It always gives you an extra weapon for those red zone conversions. And the other weapon that, that Bullock has right now is, is confidence. He's coming off a game where, where he was the key guy that created opportunities for them to score against... Uh, Against, oh, against Tufts, I'm sorry. In the semifinal. In the semifinals. The game we just watched. Tufts versus Central Florida. Right, and, and Bullock, Bullock had a lot of great hammers over the top in that zone, and that's only going to serve him well here in the finals. Alex Thorne out in the field now for Pittsburgh's offensive line. Four assists and four, four goals in the game against North Carolina in the quarterfinals today, a game we got to watch. Him and DiGirolamo have been potent players, been able to interchange. DiGirolamo coming in underneath and first cut as we've seen before for Pittsburgh. Watson, Saul not hesitating. Brenner, wide open in the end zone. Easy possession for Pittsburgh. Two to one, they lead. Doesn't get much easier than that as an offense. 
Your first cut works, continue pass works, easy huck to space. Central Florida is going to have to make it a little bit more difficult for Pitt if they want to have a chance in this game. Pittsburgh playing, having an end zone song for each player who scores, being played out in the field, not knowing celebrations. Brenner apparently a Jay-Z fan. Pittsburgh up a break early on. We've talked about the rankings a lot this weekend. This game, however, it looks like for Central Florida. At this point, it doesn't really matter. Central Florida's had a successful weekend undefeated until this point. They have cemented themselves in the top 20. Pittsburgh is right now fighting for perhaps a number one ranking, although when it comes down to seeding, I think me and you, Mario, are going to have Oregon number one. Yeah, no, no way you can't have Oregon as the number one overall seed. They won the two most important tournaments of the season. They're the best in the land right now. Pittsburgh starting to make a case so that they will be a real contender for a national championship, depending on how this game goes. Central Florida is no slouch, but we still, if Pittsburgh is, is really going towards a championship, it starts here, defeating opponents that, are, that you should beat. Bullock to best. Running Ballantyne. Sidelines for Pittsburgh right now. Every time that Best touches the disc, this is him catching it right now. Every time he touches the disc, the whole Pittsburgh signing is yelling, Hucker. They want all the players on the field to know that he is the deep thrower. Up to Bullock. Best creating space. Jumps, gets an extra jump in there on the goal line. No movement, and Bullock trying to go up line. Going for the hammer, over the top. Hanging, makes the grab. Langdon with the catch. I don't think that that's the choice that Andrew Roca wanted his team to make in that situation. But sometimes players make plays, good throw there by Best. If anything, Best has been the cog in the in the system that has made Central Florida run an offense. He's always there for the dump, the swings, the inside breaks to get things started. Bullock has acted as a great secondary handler to hammer over the top when needed. That's there though, showing that he has hammers as well. Putting it to the back, Langdon making the grab. Very well placed too. Beardsley had time to get for it for Pittsburgh. Should it hang a little bit longer. Yep, and that just shows you there's a lot of different types of ha hammers that you have to have in your arsenal. There's the big bladey one that needs to go over the top, and then there's the high-velocity flat hammer that you need to get there very quickly. Flick pull from Central Florida. Pittsburgh offense is out in the field once again. Center to Saul. Thorne underneath. Idralamo coming in back. After marked by Freistadter. Great matchup for this game. Saul finding Kunza. Thorne putting it deep for Watson. Watson comes in underneath, makes the grab, puts it out to Max Thorne for the goal. Alex Thorne ripping a backhand. Not sure if that was the greatest decision. Yeah, un uncharacteristic decision from Thorne. He, he really threw into traffic there's lots of people down there and got a bit lucky that the Florida defenders didn't make a play fortunately he's got good players on his team too they made a good read and hit Max Thorne for the goal so far in this game I think we have both teams feeling each other out Pittsburgh getting a D off of a miscue early on the defensive line definitely able to work at the field for Pittsburgh, but they still have not shut down Central Florida completely. They've dictated the pace a little bit. Central Florida, though, has been able to pull out some points. One mistake by Pittsburgh, and Central Florida can feel right back in this game, feel confident. Chris 
in Pittsburgh going through North Carolina today and Stanford in the semifinals. Pittsburgh winning their pool over Illinois and Florida the day before, going undefeated in Central Florida, facing off against a barn burner against North Carolina Wilmington yesterday, winning on Universe to win that pool. And a sloppy game, but things have really been cleaned up for Central Florida. And Bess rips one. Langdon well short of the end zone. Several players running. Put out the space behind. Makes the grab. Ballantyne with a second goal of the game. Fairly interesting. There's, there, there's two ways that you can defend a hucker when you know they're a hucker. Pittsburgh has elected to just have everyone on the sideline yell hucker. Unfortunately, that doesn't actually limit his ability to throw. So the other option, besides letting everyone know, would be to just go a little bit straight up on him. And I think that would actually be a, a better strategy against, against a thrower like that. Just don't let him throw it. If, he, if you know he's the only guy that's going to do it, shade a little bit straight up. I'm not saying go fully straight up, but just shade straight up so that he just has to change his delivery enough that it might, that it might affect his throw. End game tied 3-3. Offense is deciding to smooth things out. Big plays by both sides. And this wind has really given us a chance for these players to showcase their talents. Or lack of wind. Brenner to Saul. Big collision with Hickson and Alex Thorne. Thorne pushing off on Hickson. Interesting Hickson. call here by Hickson. Hickson's actually saying that Thorne pushed off. We're going to see here. Thorne actually ran into Hickson, who was stopping him from going deep and just came underneath. Observers, though, leave can't, the you, disc with Thorne. Sorry, Hickson. You, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. You either take away the, de take away the deep and give up the under... DiGirolamo runs it down. Thorne to DiGirolamo. What a run down the center of the field. I'm not sure that one was going to be completed, but hung in the air just long enough for Pittsburgh to take the 4-3 lead. Thorne, on the other hand, gets the under, has his cake, and eats it too. Throws it deep to DiGirolamo. Story of the game so far has been hucking for both squads. Pittsburgh 3-for-3. Three three. Central Florida 2-for-2. Two two. We've seen some exciting deep game action. I expect both teams, though, to to find a way to adjust and start taking away some of that. DJ Rolamo, though, is just so potent because he can come back in underneath and be the one throwing it. And you don't even have to be that fast when you've got Alex Thorne throwing the disc. He's going to put that to where the defender can't get it and only you can catch it as a receiver. And that's DiGirolamo and that Thorne's first points on the scoreboard. Expect to see a lot more out of this squad. Thorne now coming back on in defense with DiGirolamo as well. You know, every once in a while, it's not a bad idea to throw some of your, your, best, player, your best offensive players, throw them out there on that D-line, see if you can take a chance and get a break. Thorne already helping out with a nice pull. Rolls and Nations centering to best. And Pittsburgh sideline yelling Hucker once again. Back to Bullock. Nations. Backhand break. Langdon. Langdon's been hurting them right now with two goals and an assist in this game. One goal and an assist to best. Langdon once again. Pittsburgh switching off. DiGirolamo trying to stop Bullock. More collisions go downfield. Warden gets knocked down. Connor helps him up. Good spirit. Inside break to Ballantyne. Nations. Still a big D by Pittsburgh. Zach Kaufman, ca captain. Makes a difference, and there's the defense for Pittsburgh showing up. Drop Cho. Hausman back to Drop Cho. 
and around. Hausman is a pretty imposing player. Thorne, DiGirolamo, call on the play. DiGirolamo, as you can see here, disgusted by the call. Looks like and Bullock might have been calling a pick. This one is ruled a goal. Pittsburgh breaking to take a 5-3 lead. Now up two breaks over Central Florida. And there you go. You put your studs in on the D-line, and they're able to generate a break. All that does is give more confidence to your regular D-line who's about to go on the field and take the pressure off them a little bit and allow them to try to make a play. Thorne's second assist this game, DiGirolamo, second goal, and both of them from receptions from Thorne. I'm not sure who I'd take as a Callahan candidate if I had to nominate one from Pittsburgh. Thorne and DiGirolamo seem to play well, so well off of each other. It's taking one away from the other. <laughs> Colin Connor. Central Florida has, has got, got to keep Freist that are on the on the O line. I know that they've been trying to work him onto that D line, but their offense simply is not potent enough to score consistently against the tough Pittsburgh defense. He's got to be out there just to give him that, give them that option and just take away one of the best defenders from Pittsburgh. Bullock picks up the shoestring catch. Best, Bettis. Freys that are being backed by 10 yards. Does a good job right there coming in and gaining 15 yards on an underneath. Hausman, guarded and warm up going deep. Bettis comes down with it, and Central Florida back on top. Drop toe trying to cut off the pass, go up for it early. Just ends up get, losing his footing. And f I think the key player on that O-line was Freistetter. He drew a tough matchup, which allowed everyone else to have a slightly easier matchup as a cutter, and that's what led to that goal. 5-4, Central Florida leads, and Jeremy Langdon, two assists and a goal so far in this game, playing big for Central Florida. As we take a look at the D-line for Central Florida, Freysetter is going to get a lot of PT here in this game, and he's going to have to be their horse. He is going to take them as, as far as they'll go on a national level. Central Florida with the poll and an offsides call on Pittsburgh. We'll get a warning and we will have a repoll. We'll have a repoll here. wind has completely died. Conditions are absolutely still. Brenner picking up the pole for Thorne. Saul going deep and we see a zone from Central Florida. And it works immediately as they get a D. Hickson picking it up, not hesitating, drawing the foul. Hospital completed.
Looks like Hickson is able to complete that pass. Like Ogren with another D. And I love that shot, especially as a D line. You know, he might have reached through and tried to draw a foul there, but excellent. That's an excellent time to strike immediately off a turnover. Just get it into the end zone and make a play. We're tied up at 5-5. Pittsburgh still up a break. D-line for Central Florida finally getting one. Alex Thorne did a great job actually breaking that zone on that point, but one of his teammates should have gone right back to him and threw, in, threw right into the teeth of the zone. Both teams again coming in with relatively easy semifinals. Central Florida going over Tufts quickly. Pittsburgh doing the same to Stanford. Central Florida out of the southeast region, which should be very contentious with potentially only one bid. Pittsburgh from the Ohio Valley looking pretty good with two bids at least. Ohio doing well today. Thorne still with the zone for Central Florida. Thorne just throws around it. Finding Max Thorne back to Watson. Sprinting up, give and goes. Finding the open man, Di Girolamo. Looking for an option. Putting inside to Saul. Tight window. Pittsburgh up six to five. Di Girolamo gets the assist here, but this point is all Thorns. The initial breaking of the zone happened on his outside in flick early in the point. That got Pittsburgh running from there. It's dishy, 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 dishy goal. Right now, both teams, Hucking still working extremely well. Seven for seven total. Pittsburgh three for three. Central Florida four for four. Not too many... D's are miscues, and they've been capitalized by both, te by both teams. There's been one miscue for UCF, a turnover that was not forced. One D for Pittsburgh, one D for UCF, and that's where we're at right now. DiGirolamo and Thorne leading the way. DiGirolamo, two goals and an assist. Thorne, two assists, and doing everything to create offensively for Pittsburgh. D-line on the field, Di Girolamo playing this point in the tournament, playing your best players as much as possible when they're fresh. Great pull to get things started in the back of the end zone. That Pittsburgh player tripping over the line. Bullock loving the hammers. Bettis. Hammer all the way to Langdon. Christian Pitts can't get over there, and it's a jailbreak for Central Florida. Defense is able to catch up. Call on the play. Hausman calling a push off or a travel. Travel ruled. Upheld by the observer. Looks like on his pump fake, he actually slid his pivot foot just a little bit. Hausman forcing him up the line. Best calling a violation, and Hausman saying he moved before the count started. When you call a travel, you have to go back to the same marking position that you were in when you called the travel. Now going back to the kill call. Hausman trying to force the handle to throw up field, and Quentin Wharton comes to the rescue. Bullock. Best. Nothing available. Pittsburgh defense really starting to shut down. Colin Connor on the mark, made a mistake earlier. He is a fourth year player, not a fifth year. Still potentially one more year to go of eligibility. Bettis. 
finding Best near the end zone. Best is in the situation so many times, flips it to Wharton. Foul called on the play. Beardsley getting a piece of Wharton, going up the line. Nice little wrap cut there. Definitely some contact. Beardsley playing physical, but it looks like both t players are vying for the same space. Beardsley actually getting the disc before it got to Wharton. Hausman trying to go around, finds DiGirolamo. No, best with the D. Give credit, give the real credit to Bullock. Bullock stopped the around throw, made the offensive player go to a secondary quick throw, and that creates the D. Jeremy Langdon now is having a great game so far. His second goal of the game with two assists. And right there, Central Florida able to hold. Pittsburgh three for three right now in the red zone. Central Florida missing that first opportunity on that possession, but getting it back on the play of John Best. Taking a look here at the at the D by Pittsburgh. Made a really great play there. And that and that's what Pittsburgh does. Pittsburgh is always in the right position to make a play. You know, it's not about trying to make plays. It's being in the right position to make a play. Central Florida gets it going again. Staying in this game, and we have a great one so far. Good offensive efficiency shown by both teams. And a zone by Central Florida in dead of wind. Pittsburgh's cutting through it without much care. Kunsa finding a wide open Watson. Now things have gotten set to a man defense. Back to Saul. Call on the play. Isaac Saul, younger brother of Noah Saul and Ruben Saul. Ruben Saul playing for Maryland. I, Noah Saul just graduating from North Carolina. Thorne over the top. DiGirolamo makes the catch. Call on the play. DiGirolamo is not happy. That would have been Thorne's third assist of the game and DiGirolamo's third goal. Now looks back for Saul. Kunsa, Thorne, quick movement, Thorne, putting it out to space. Watson goes up for it. Running Saul, can't. Freysauter coming in, closing, getting the D. Freysauter, not the, not the quickest guy out there, but he certainly is long. And this is Central Florida's opportunity to get back on serve. Reedy. Finding Valentine underneath. Putting it deep. Freystarter goes up and makes the catch. And shows off his dancing skills. These UCF guys love to dance. I tell you what, the more the more I watch Freystarter and just the, the way I watch him operate, I'm actually reminded a bit of Bo Kittredge and the way he plays. Now Frey Stoddard certainly does not have the world-class speed that Kittredge has, but he has everything else. He's got the height, he's got the jumping ability, and, he, and he's really taking advantage of the yardage that the Pittsburgh, off, Pittsburgh defense is giving him. And that's exactly what, what makes Kit, has made Kittredge not only the best athlete in the game, but also one of the best all-around players in the game because he's smart enough to get the yards that he's given and 
get the greatest advantage for his team that he can, even though maybe his greatest weapon, his deep game as a receiver, is being taken away. Central Florida now up 7-6. to six. Could take, potentially, to break to take half. This is not quite what we expected. Pittsburgh is the favored team in this instance. And Central Florida loving the underdog role. Yeah, this has been the cleanest game that we've seen all weekend. This is maybe the first game that I can remember where the, where the teams at any point in the game had more goals than turnovers. This pole going out of bounds. Being Pittsburgh's oh, a good chance to start with a short field. Looks like a side stack set up here for Pittsburgh. First cut definitely going to be Thorne. Thorne comes in underneath. Lots of space. Too many players cutting deep. Brenner and DiGirolamo. Things are still moving. Saul looking for someone back. Finding Brenner. Escaping the high stall situation. Kunsa, Thorne. Finding Brenner, a beautiful inside break by Thorne for his third assist of the game. 7-7, seven, seven, this point for half. You know, as, as I'm watching Pittsburgh, taking the perspective of other teams that might have to play them down the road, I'm watching how many inside break backhands they throw. Whenever they're forced backhand, they like to step through the mark and just throw that floaty inside out backhand out into space. The adjustment that I would make is, first of all, just for some flick. That throw is extremely more difficult if it has to be either an inside out flick or a lefty backhand. The inside out break is the easiest break you can throw. And that small adjustment is going to disallow these, these yardage gaining upfield cuts from the handler spot. Just to play a little bit of devil's advocate, I think some teams are actually forcing backhand because they're afraid of Thorne's ability to put those inside out forehands, which he's shown the ability to do so, but that is Thorne, who's a world-class thrower. I mean, a, a great handler is just going to get his. I'm talking about everybody else on, on the field. Thorne is the only guy that really has that great inside out break forehand. No one else has that throw. It gives you a, more, a better chance of a, of a bad throw happening or the throw just not getting off. Connor with the pull. Bullock to best for Wharton. Freystadter underneath, Freystadter on offense, marked by Hausman. Looking for an option, puts it out to space. That is able to come in underneath. Best doing a great job creating space. Travel called. This isn't the first time we've seen John Best frustrated with a call this weekend. Looks like there was a travel call for a change of direction after catching it. Not sure about that one. Best. Inside break. Trent Dillon with a layout grab. And best frustration got the best of him in that situation. He got frustrated with the call and tried to bite off a little more than he could chew with that throw. Drop Cho finding Bender. Goes up, makes the catch. Plants it in for a perfect 10, and Pittsburgh takes half 8 to 7. Well, we're getting the game we wanted, Brian. 8-7 at half. It's only going to get more exciting from here on out. We've seen both defenses able to break. As we see here, the replay. Drop to sees Bender streaking. Goes up. Plants it. And we are at half. We'll be back in a few minutes with coverage of the second half. This is Brian Jones from Mario O'Brien, part of Next Gen Network's coverage of 2012 College Easterns.
as we're watching the finals of 2012 College Easterns on Next Gen Network. I'm Brian Jones here with Mario Brian Pittsburgh has taken an eight to seven halftime lead up a break and their offensive line is out on the field. We've seen Alex Thorne and Tyler D. Girolamo go deep and go wild plenty of times throughout this tournament. So we've seen Central Florida battle back on the play of John Best and Misha Freistadter. Mario O'Brien, this has been a great game so far. Yeah, and the story of the game has been not only the players making plays for Pittsburgh, but also those players spreading it around. We have eight different players besides the, all, besides the superstars that have either an assist or a goal for Pittsburgh. And support for today's coverage comes from Ultimate <coughs> Quebec, located in beautiful Quebec province, Canada. Ultimate Quebec has more than 1,400 mem members playing on more than 200 teams year-round. Ultimate Quebec organizes the largest indoor t Ultimate tournament in North America, the Mars Attack. Support from Quebec City, Canada. Different country, same passion. A big thanks to Ultimate Quebec for supporting NGN. Check them out online at ultimatequebec.ca. And as we get started, UCF coming out with a break opportunity. Putting it deep. Makes the grab along the sideline. Gets another Gatorade bath. And UCF calls a timeout. Now going back to that turnover for Pitt. That's a play and a throw that you want to make against most teams in College Ultimate. When you've got Freystetter the tallest and fastest defender for Central Florida. That's a throw that you can't just throw because you're throwing it to DiGirolamo. You actually have to wait for a minute, realize that you're throwing into the most difficult matchup on the field, holster it, try to work underneath. We'll see if Central Florida can come back and tie this game up. We're going to go to commercial. Thanks for listening in Next Gen Network's coverage of 2012 College Easterns. And we're set up on the field here in Wilmington, North Carolina. We have vertical stacks set up for Central Florida trying to tie this game. Frey Stoddard in isolation. Ogren putting it up for Frey Stoddard. Makes the grab for the goal, and this game is tied back up. That's an excellent technique by Frey Stoddard. You make a cone cut, and then you, you, do, you need to do two things. First of all, you got to clear your defender out of there, and the best way to do that is to cut back towards the back corner of the end zone. There's a lot of space back there. Your handler will have an option for the throw. If he doesn't throw it, what you've done is you've gotten your defender out of the way, setting them up for another cone cut. In that case, a nice touchy flick throw to Freystetter for the goal. Mike Ogren making a big play before that, grabbing the huck before the timeout. He's had two assists in this game. Freystetter's third goal of the game on that reception. Ogren had a great game in semis as well. I remember one of the greatest plays of the game in semis was Ogren with a big hand block then immediately sprinted deep, caught the goal for the bookends. Pittsburgh's offense back on the field. We've seen Kazmarek has talked about how the defense has been playing and they've been able to come up with breaks so far in this game. He was concerned about the offense, saying that Florida early on in pool play was a team that really was able to get to them. Here, Central Florida isn't doing too bad, getting breaks back, hanging around in this game. Yeah, Central Florida is just executing on offense. They're not, they're not having any unforced errors. Pittsburgh is certainly playing tight. I'd say their, be their defense has been better overall than Central Florida's. But Central Florida has just executed Going perfectly deep. so far. Watson makes the grab, and that huck traveled a long way, Mario. You know, traveled a long way, almost all the way to Quebec, but not quite as far as Quebec. More support coming to NGN from the province of Quebec, this time from the Fédération Québécois de Ultimate. Created in 2006 to coordinate the development of Ultimate in the province of Quebec, the Fédération Quebec de Squad de Ultimate rep represents 5,502 members in nine regional associations and still growing each year. They play hosts to CQU7, the biggest selection event for Canadian Championship, and will be hosting the host of the 2012 Canadian High School Ultimate Championship. As with all our backers, a big thanks, and make sure to check them out online at FQ. 
u.ca. Big thanks to those in Quebec. That huck from DiGirolamo traveling a long way. Watson making the catch. DiGirolamo's second assist of the game. Two goals as well. Markup for his total. Colin Connor with the pull. It was out of bounds, and Central Florida will get a bit of a short field to work with. 9-8 Pittsburgh leads. It's interesting to see if any adjustments are made by this Pittsburgh D-line out of the second half. Central Florida coming out vert stack. Look for them to isolate Freystetter eventually. Stoppage on the play. A little bit of discussion there. Observer comes in, tells it how it is, plays resumes. Best, Wharton. Finding his receiver underneath, Bettis. Freestarter now playing offense with Hickson. Hickson, loving the trigger finger. Puts it deep, Wharton stays with it and makes the catch. The defender is calling a foul here. And I don't know how the observer is going to rule it, but that's a horrible foul call. The offensive player did exactly what he's supposed to do in that situation. He played position. He boxed out. And when the defender came in to make a play, he ran into the exact position where the offensive player was. That's the case where if you're doing your job as an offensive player, you'll actually get two bids at the disc. Quit Morton. Stepping up huge for Central Florida, 9-9. Nine nine. And we're lucky. A lot of times the finals aren't the best game we're going to see all weekend. But so far, this is living up to what we expected after so many close games on day one. And also, Central Florida is just, I think, living up to the hype. I think after, after warm-up, everyone saw their finish and said, who is, who is Central Florida? These guys have never been to nationals. Who are they? And I think this, this really, this performance here in this tournament, another finals performance. They beat some good teams. They beat the number one seed in the tournament, Tufts. They are a legit contender, certainly in the Southeast region and as w in the nation as well. Central Florida possibly making a run out of this thing, starting here, making adjustments. Andrew Roca saying not, not liking what he saw. That warm-up, Florida, the first year they made Nationals, was able to win it with Tim Garrett. Kirk Gibson as well. Saul to Thorne. We see, hear some thunder in the distance. We may have storms coming in. Overthrown. Watson makes the grab. DiGirolamo, give and go. Nobody with him. Easy. <laughs> Flip to Thorne after Watson makes, makes the catch. That plays all but over. And that, that's just really a tough break for Central Florida. They did everything right. They got, they put themselves in a situation for the block. And unfortunately, they put all their chips in and it, it led to an easy goal for Pittsburgh. But you got to be happy with the opportunities that you're getting right now if you're Central Florida defensively. DiGirolamo leading the stat sheet. Three assists and two goals so far in this game. Some club team needs to pick up this fray starter kid real quick. With that what size and that speed and his throws for big men, very impressive. I'm, I'm not totally impressed with his speed yet, but he, he gets so much respect because of his size. You don't have to be blazing fast when you're that tall to create a mismatch. A 
Colin Connor getting set to pole, trying to extend this lead for Pittsburgh. Best going all the way back to get it. Nobody there. And Pittsburgh is going to want a Callahan. Sideline can smell blood. Freystadter coming in underneath. Best putting it to a wide open Langdon. Nobody else available. Wharton sprinting to the area. Still no mark to Bullock. And we have a call on the play and a travel is called. John Best here arguing things out with Hausman. No travel ruled on the play. It's going to stay with Langdon all the way down the field. There's a reason why Pittsburgh sideline was yelling Hucker earlier in the game. Yeah, he's connected on both of his attempts so far. Now at this point, with everyone down the field, the pit defenders need to forget about the man they're, they're guarding and just sprint to the end zone. The most important thing is to stop the goal from happening. Don't worry about your man. Everyone just get down to the end zone. Make sure that doesn't happen and then mark up. Best sneaking up out of bounds, getting the catch in the end zone. We have a call on the play, a pick called. It looks like Best ran his man right into the mark. Best trying to go the out-of-bounds way. Smart call by Hausman. Smart positioning by Hausman to not run out-of-bounds with him, knowing that the, he wasn't going to be able to catch the disc out there. Hammer goes up, tipped in the air, and we have some contact and a foul call. Bullock throws over the top. Again, into the Wolf Pack. Of course, there's going to be contact. This is, it's tough to decide who fouled who in this situation. You're always going to have some type of call in that situation. And, and un unfortunately, in a lot of situations, that disc goes back because you don't have observers. Good thing we're here on the premier field. We've got observers there to, to rule. No foul. We have four of them, thankfully. And that's truly a missed opportunity for Central Florida. Going back to how that, that play started, they were unguarded five yards outside of the end zone. They did not center the disc, which result, resulted in a missed opportunity for a goal. And also give credit for Pittsburgh for, to Pittsburgh for busting down, stopping that initial attack, and forcing a tough throw. Play restarts. Connor can't make the catch. Underthrown by Kunsa. Miscue for Pittsburgh. Best getting another opportunity here. Putting out the space and miscommunication. Trying to put it to space for Freystadter. Both teams here should settle down a bit. Consecutive turnovers. Thorne, Ababovich. Thorne looking deep. Puts it on a line. Hausman cannot make the grab. I actually think Hausman might have whiffed on this one. Thorne's expecting his buddy to make this catch. That one was speedy. Hausman yeah. just not. It was going just a little bit too fast. Hausman not able to time his steps right to get a hand on it. Best. Looking up field, Thorne almost getting the D. Call on the play. Still some discussion here. Foul called on the play. Best 
to Hexen. Hexen coming in on the, after the injury call. Freistadter putting it deep for Hexen. Out in front, Hexen cannot get there. Runs into the end line. Connor starts things off. Kaufman. Defense for Central Florida now finally catching up. It's a great fast break there, getting the first 30 yards of the field for free there by Pittsburgh. They hustle to the disc, they get the disc moving, and they're 30 yards downfield by the time Central Florida is able to even set their defense. Thorne in discussion with Wharton, figuring out who contacted who. This is a big possession for both teams. If Pitt's able to punch this one in, they would have their first lead of, of more than one point throughout the whole game. Kaufman the thorn. Hausman with a ridiculous layout grab. Kaufman. Hausman. Back to Kaufman. Kunza running at Bobovich. Bobovich returns the favor for Hausman. Kaufman, Thorne. This is a display of Pittsburgh's athleticism. Been looking for an option, finds a Bobovich. Has Hausman for the goal. The assist and the goal both coming from players who laid out to save possession, and Pittsburgh is up 11 9 on Central Florida. Mario O'Brien, you're shaking your head here in amazement, I hope. Yeah, that's a good end zone dance right there. Pittsburgh, Hausman driving the brake bus for Pittsburgh. We have a timeout on the field. Central Florida collecting their nerves. So, Brian, talking about the top teams in the nation, Oregon, Pittsburgh. Do any, do any other teams right now in the nation measure up to these two teams? Is there anyone who you could even put in the argument that, that, that is above either of those two teams right now? I don't think there's anybody who's above them, but there are definitely contenders coming in. And Wisconsin is a team I've been kept my, kept my eye on for this entire season. And the reason is, is that with Wisconsin, they always develop well. And it's two months till nationals. With North Central getting at least four bids in my eyes, possibly five, it's not likely that Wisconsin could really even miss out on nationals unless they absolutely decided to pull a Jekyll and Hyde and play badly. And so they're going to have two months to develop. And if there's a squad in the nation besides Carleton that knows how to develop, it's got to be Wisconsin. Absolutely. And those teams in the, the, the North Central also have another advantage of having one more competitive tournament where they get to see lots of good competition at regionals. They really get to fine-tune their skills. Like you said, not a big risk of not making nationals, but they're just getting that much more experience in tough games against good teams. After that, Carleton definitely still recovering from the losses of Grant Lindsley and among others. But they are a team that you just can't count out until we get to the series. Central Florida is surprising me here. Not sure other than that if we see too many other teams. Minnesota is a team that has done well at Centex, surprising North Central fo foes. They have yet to take that next step to go to the next level. They need to put together, need to keep working, need to realize that, yes, we did well now, but you're not better until, at, than Wisconsin until the dust settles at Nationals. You're not better than Carleton until you get there and you've finished higher than them at that point. Looks like the wind has picked up, now blowing from left to right, causing this pole to come up short. Pittsburgh coming out here against Central Florida's man-to-man -man defense. Fries that are not in the game for Central Florida. Play gets started, going deep, makes the catch. And that's best again. We, we talked about it earlier. There's a couple different ways you can choose to defend a hooker. 
And in my opinion, you would just have to start going more straight up against him. He's the only person throwing deep. He's connected almost every time today. Got to make an adjustment. Best playing extremely well for Central Florida. The cog in the machine. Mike Ogren going deep. Ogren, normally a defensive player here, coming on the offensive side to keep Central Florida in it. Mixing things up. Ogren's had a great game today. Two assists and two goals. Really taking some of the pressure, pressure off of Frey Setter. Jeremy Langdon also coming up huge for Central Florida. Two goals and two assists for him as well. You know, who we haven't heard from a lot in this game for Central Florida is Hickson. He was the guy who seemed to be really involved for them yesterday with the absence of Frey Stetter, but now they're spreading, around, spreading it around a little bit. Pole goes up from Ogren. Again, a short pole drifting out of bounds as this wind has picked up a little bit from the dead standstill it was at earlier. Saul trying to keep this lead going for Pittsburgh. Thorne getting a lot of space from Hickson. I.O. break over the top to Saul. Back to Kunta. Kunta faking out his mark. Saul finding DJ Rolamo. Kunta. DiGirolamo, toes in the line, called in by the observers. That's his third goal of the game with three assists to go with it. DiGirolamo just left Frey that are bewildered with his cuts. You're going to see the nice inside-out throw for Pittsburgh leading to a goal. And Frey Setter is disappointed in himself. He's walking back to the line slowly. He's used to being able to overpower his matchup, be just as fast and outposition his matchup, but that's just not going to work against Digeralimo, one of the best players in the country. Getting close towards the end of this game. Pittsburgh up 12 to 10. Central Florida needs to hold. Not much more room for error as we continue on. Both defenses really haven't had the most consistent opportunities for breaks. Pittsburgh just converting on a few more chances than Central Florida at this point. Thorne, staying in on defense. Best once again picking it up. Nobody picking up Bullock. Oh, runs out of bounds, allows Kaufman to get a mark on and then throws it up the line. D by Pittsburgh. Yeah, the D's going to come here. Best just makes a poorly angled cut. He needs to go back towards the middle of the field and actually create the angle going up line so that his thrower can actually see the defender. Hausman making the catch off of the up line toss by Thorne. Hausman finding Kaufman. Makes the grab in the end zone. Kick spike and Pittsburgh's up by three. Starting to pull away in these waning moments. I'm going to take a look at the upline cut. Bullock gets beat upline, the cardinal sin of guarding handlers when the disc is trapped on the sideline. And this time it leads to a goal. Looks like Pittsburgh should secure a number two seed in the nation going into the Nationals should they win out past this point and win this game. 
Oregon claiming rights to no, most likely number one. Again, this is dependent on both of those teams going through their series, not stumbling before reaching nationals. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh looks great. And this is and this is sort of I wouldn't say that Central Florida is the type of high octane team that Oregon is, but certainly has the type of athletes that Oregon has. That's the second offsides call against Pittsburgh. And this one will result in a half field placement of the disc. Central Florida gaining a lot of yards. And this is a huge advantage here for Central Florida. If you, I don't know if you saw, but that pull landed in the back of the end zone. Central Florida only going to have to work half as far as they would have to get this goal. Again, no Freistetter on the field for Central Florida. Larry starts, Bullock trying to get things going. Scuber into traffic, deed by Pittsburgh. Not a way to take advantage, and Thorne striking deep. Di Girolamo just out of reach. Di Girolamo not happy with himself, but that one's not on him. That's on his buddy Thorne. He's got to put a little more touch on that one. Trying to drop it in. Just gets the left hand on it. Best. Putting it deep indeed by Kaufman. Going through Di Girolamo. Hallsman. Kaufman snatching it. Call on the play. The mark you're going to see here, the mark is actually standing perfectly still. He's gonna, we're going to see a couple throws here. And the mark's standing in good position. Kaufman just tries to pivot through him, and you can't do that. Kaufman starts to play. Active mark finds Hausman. Thorne just looking around, finding Hausman with a great layout. Flips it, makes the grab, calling down from the. No, it is a score. Pittsburgh up 14 to 10. Mm. Close one there. Two consecutive throws leading to great grabs. Kazmarek is pumped up about his defense. He's twirling his finger around in the air saying, let's do it again. Let's end it right now on defense. It's time for the old, du old Dudes Play of the Game, brought to you by Mark Fritz, specializing in dump, swings, and savvy calls since 1962. Thanks, Mark. This play, Zach Kaufman getting the D, leading to a Pittsburgh break. Captain Zach Kaufman of Pittsburgh with the play of the game by, from Old Dude. Defense has helped build this lead for Pittsburgh. Kazmarek, as you said, has to be ple pleased after this performance. This game was close. 10-9 Pittsburgh led. 9-9 at one point. Could go on a 6-1 run to end this game. Yeah, Pittsburgh is, is the whole package. 
They've got everything they need to make a run at the national championship. They've got stars. They've got a great coach. They've got su supporting players. And they've got the attitude. They've got a chip on their shoulder that says, we, don't, we, don't, we think we can beat everyone in the nation. Best hammering all the way to Ogren. Back to Bettis. Nations. Trying to find a way through. Back to Bettis. Excuse me, best. Pulling around to Ogren. Foul called on the play. Pittsburgh is continuing to pressure every throw. Kazmark is insisting that his team not let up and try to end the game here on defense. Trying to find the around. And foul called. Abavich hoping he had the hand block. Showing him exactly where he got it on his wrist. Definitely a foul. A lot of wrist on that hand block attempt. Ogren looking for the around. Finding Bettis. Wharton flips it for the score to Langdon. Jeremy Langdon with his third goal of the game. Two assists on the day as well. Played a pivotal role for the Central Florida offensive line. Pittsburgh wanted to end the game in the defense and now our offense is going to be have to we have a timeout on the field. Andrew Roca trying to rally his troops to victory. Yeah, you can see him in the middle of that huddle saying, guys, the time is now. Everybody get up on the sideline. Everyone get involved in the play in whatever way you can. We need our best players on the field. Everyone doing their job. We need a D right now. In every single major tournament this year, counting Stanford, Centex, and Easterns, we have seen close games at the end. Oregon winning over Pittsburgh 15-13 to at the finals of Stanford Invite. Minnesota coming back in the game against Oregon. Oregon holding on to win a universe point game at Centex 15-14. to Central Florida trying to force it into that same situation. And if you're Pitt right now, you're just, you're just doing your thing on offense. Thorne, DiGirolamo, younger Thorne, those guys are going to run the show. Kaufman centers to Saul, and we see a trap zone with Freistadter and Hickson in the cup. And big, a five, or six, four, and six, eight defenders. Thorne, hopping through, throws over the top to his brother, Makes the grab, finds the wide open man. Didralum can't make the catch. Central Florida escapes. Still has possession and a chance. Hickson have been throwing it deep all game long. Thinks better of it now. Best is unmarked. Nobody cutting deep for him. Running Wharton. Freistadter. Makes the catch along the line. Ogren. Puts a hammer to space. That is an incredible throw. Makes the catch, flips to Wharton for the goal. Bettis to Wharton. Central Florida definitely up in this game now. Yeah, Central Florida did exactly what they need to do. They came out, made a defensive adjustment, forced a difficult throw, and got what they needed. They got a break, and now it's a game, Brian. Anything can happen once, you're, once you've got some momentum as a defensive team late in the game. Max Thorne was one throw away from putting it away, and Central Florida now on the verge of a comeback. Pittsburgh has to be a bit nervous here. That four-person zone, that four-person cup, now they're going to have to try to score upwind. And we have on the line the Eastern's Cup trophy. Going back to 1990 when Tufts first won Easterns, last year's champion was Florida, unable to defend their title. 
Ogren with the pull. Another blade pull. Trying to pin Pittsburgh against the sideline. Almost hitting our wonderful cameraman. Excellent pull choice there. The, the pull rolls out of bounds, allows your defense to set exactly how you want it. Saul taking the disc from the sideline. And again, an intimidating four-person cup. Hickson, Freistadter, definitely double teaming. Two players within 10 feet of marking. <laughs> Kaufman showing how exactly 10 feet might be. Pittsburgh getting scientific with their measurements. Central Florida waiting this time to put together this cup. Saw over the top. Thorn. Saul, especially before he's still trying to trap them against the sideline. Finding Saul. Thorne in the middle of that. Putting it around backhand. Blade finding Di Girolamo. What a great throw. Brenner has Max Thorne on the other side. Cannot find him. Alex. Kaufman. Di Girolamo. Di Girolamo, one pass away. Looks like we had some contact. Hickson doing actually a great job stopping the upline cut. Pittsburgh defender not used to just being stopped on his cut like that. Actually, it was fantastic position by Hickson there on the upline handler cut. This is a tough spot to score from Alamo if you're calling Pittsburgh. Calling a timeout. And I think that's a wise choice there by DiGirolamo. No need to take a chance. Get your coach in here. Have him set up the play. Make sure that you get the right opportunity for the goal. Going back to this zone point, this is just all Alex Thorne. No one else on the field could have made that throw. And that is a terribly difficult throw. An outside in blade backhand in the wind. He's got all the tools. Thorne taking control of the huddle. Kazmarek breaks him. I can't imagine that we're going to see an attempt at the goal on this first throw. I think what Kazmarek is probably going to do is have the disc dump and either dump and swing or just isolate Thorne against his defender. I also wouldn't be surprised to see DiGirolamo dump the disc and then have him be the one to try to score the goal. DiGiromo and Thorne lined up together. They worked well, assisting goals between them. Starts up Thorne trying to beat in isolation. Finds Max Thorne for the goal and the win. Pittsburgh wins Easterns. Try to carry this momentum into Nationals. Central Florida with a hard fort game. And in our last play of the game, Alex Thorne is actually just the decoy for his younger brother. Alec, his younger brother Max comes across the end zone beating his defender in a foot race to the near cone the easy handoff for the goal Pittsburgh is Eastern's champion 2012 Max Thorne getting open on that last play of the game second goal we'll see more of Pittsburgh come the series for sure I'm Brian Jones from Mario O'Brien. This has been Next Gen Network's coverage of the 2012 College Easterns. Thanks for tuning in.